The following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at CARM.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome to the show. It's me, Matt Slick. You're listening to Matt Slick Live. Hey, we got a bit of a special show today, I'll let you know. And uh, so, Eddie, the reason... I didn't have my headset on or set up right. That's why I couldn't hear you inside a stream yard. So what we're going to do is we're going to have um, uh, Eddie Delcor. He's a, he's, a, he's a great apologist. And we're going to also have probably uh, George Saig. He's a great apologist. And Anthony Rogers. He's a great apologist. Uh, and we're going to be discussing Islam because they're doing a conference. And... Um, I wanted to, to uh, promote the conference because these guys are great. I've known George for a long time and met these other guys, uh, too, in the past few years. They're great guys. And there's going to be a conference uh, for born-again Christians. The first 20 people uh, to, to use the promo code SLICK <laughs> will get 70% off. And if you're in uh, California and coming in person, I guess it's going to be in California, huh, uh, is uh, seven vouchers for free if you slick if you slick if you text slick we'll be doing it again to 7143911 no wait, three <laughs> i just messed up of uh, 7143910467 and so what i'll be doing is uh, uh we'll be going over that again now we're supposed to have two other guys call in and what we're going to do is uh we're going to kind of play it by ear a little bit we're just going to do we're just going to see what's going to happen so let me just get on the air here with uh, Eddie. Are you there, buddy? <laughs> hey, hey, man. How you doing? Doing all right, man. Hey, sorry about the little bit of confusion there. The reason I couldn't talk is because I had one of my settings on my computer wrong inside of StreamYard. You can get back oh, into StreamYard sorry. if you want and be, you know, they can show you. It's not a big uh, deal. But, uh, but you can, if I go back on, you cannot hear me, though, right? Yeah, we can hear you here. It, it doesn't matter. Saying the phone here is fine. Um, and hopefully George will come on in a little bit because he and I were chatting in text a little bit ago, and I think Anthony's supposed to call too. So we'll get it figured out. But oh, this is what I well. just found out. I just found out oh. that I'll be on the air here with you, and uh, if George calls, then we can get him on. But if Anthony calls, then we can't get him on. We only have two people on with me simultaneously at a time. We can probably switch later in the show between oh. which one goes. No big deal. Well, I'm probably most, the more, most significant one to have on, so you can keep me. <laughs> so. <laughs> See, that's why I like you guys, you know, because uh, people who listen to this show, they'll get a kick out of that because um, we have fun. I like to have fun on the show and things like that. So look, folks, if you are interested in information about Islam, we have some experts uh, calling in today. Uh, Edward, Eddie Delcor, I'll, he'll introduce himself a little bit. And we'll talk about the conference that's going to be going on. Uh, it looks like it's going to be going on in California uh, on September 10th. And uh, it's be, uh, yeah, that's right. Ministry to Muslims. We're going to have um, Eddie Delcor and also Anthony Rogers along with George Saig. It's going to be good stuff. So, hey, Eddie, tell you what, man. Tell you what, why don't you just introduce yourself to everybody, tell them what you do, where you are, and all of that kind of stuff. Right. I'm Edward Delcor. I'm in sunny hot right now it's 110 i think where i'm at in california we're having somewhat of a heat wave but i um i live here we have a uh, an educational apologetic ministry called department of christian defense we've had this since the late or mid late mid or late 90s and it's just an informational hub and i teach at a couple seminaries i enjoy what i do and i'm um, delighted to be online with you i know you and i did a lot of things i don't know if you remember matt we were going to go to columbia right before i bought the plane ticket the pandemic happened uh, remember we, we were going to go with Luis yeah. and pastor carlos yeah that's right Luis Carlos um, Reyes. he's awesome <laughs> I, oh yeah i almost bought that ticket but so almost. um i keep busy with that and um yeah but i'm delighted Oh, no problem. Just I just messed up. I th I hit the air thing and I messed up and I hung up on him. So, uh, oh man, that is not okay. good. So, uh, hey George, are you there? Yes. <laughs> oh George. Yeah. So uh, I just hung up on Eddie. <laughs> so oh. uh, we, 
No, I did it by accident because you know, I was trying to get you on with him. So uh, I got to make sure, you know. So Keith, because what I understand is—is is Eddie on? Did you, Keith put him on? Hey, Eddie, yeah. my bad, man. I, I hung up yeah, on you accidentally. We got George on. Cool man. <laughs> so, Good hey, nothing personal. <laughs> So yeah, you were saying we almost went down to Colombia, and um, you know with uh, yeah, and, Luis Carlos uh, Reyes. I re- I, re- I remember that. I remember that trip. Just just by any chance, do you hear me right now on, on uh, Streamyard or the uh, let me, phone? Uh, no, you're not on Streamyard. You have to uh, go in there with the same Streamyard thing I gave you. Put in the text there, and should be fine. But, we'll get you in. Okay. Yeah, when you go cool. to StreamYard, they want you to go directly on YouTube. Anyway, um, we're having a great conference yeah. this, this coming up, no, and I think the ninth, right? Yeah, I'm looking at the information. It's uh, on the ninth, tenth, and eleventh um, okay. of September, and it's going to be at Calvary Chapel uh, at one seven four five one Baston Cherry Road. Okay, who did we lose? Okay, and we lost Edward. And we lost Eddie. Hey, George, are you there? Let's try this. George, are you there? I am here. All right, George. Sorry about that. We had a couple of technical issues there. We're working it out. But, uh, hey, so, look, I want to introduce you to everybody uh, because uh, I really have a lot of respect for you, George. I really do. You know, we've known each other for a few years, and, um, you know, you just have a heart for Muslims. And... Uh, you know, I've seen you witness. I've seen how you witness. I remember when we were in Seattle a few years ago together, and you were witnessing the Muslims. I could see the compassion in your face and the, your tone. You're witnessing in Arabic and English, and uh, you know, I just, I just think you're a great guy. I really do. I'm not just saying it, but uh, you know, you love the Lord Jesus. And anyway, having said that, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody, and uh, we're just going to move along here. Okay, uh, thank you so much for allowing us to be with you today. Um, yes, uh, my name is uh, George Sayi. I don't know if the voice I'm hearing myself again is. I think you have your audio. computer on. Yeah, you had to turn your computer down if you have it on for feedback or anything else. Just stay on the air, on the radio uh-huh. here, on the phone. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, our ministry is ministry to Muslims.com. I'm originally mm-hmm. from Sudan. I came to Sudan over 20 years ago, and my desire is to reach out to Muslims in the U.S. And we've been uh, reaching Muslims um, since 2001, a few months before September 11. And uh, actually, the name of the event is Our Strong Tower, is as a memory of September 11. Um, mm-hmm. They were able to destroy our towers in New York, but they will not be able to destroy our strong tower. Right. Amen, brother. Amen. And it's going to be at uh, Chapel Saving Grace in Yorba Linda, right? Yorba Linda, California. Uh, Calvary Chapel Saving Grace on September 11 itself, but September 10 and, and September 9 and 10, it will be at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. Uh, okay. In uh, Chino Hills, the city of Chino Hills. Uh, but both of them in Southern California. Right. Both days, both uh, locations. What we'll do is we'll put the uh, information out on our newsletter because a lot of people in Southern California have received the newsletter. We're not on the air down there, but you never know. People have connections from all over. Uh, and so we're in Utah, we're in Ohio, we're in on the East Coast here in radio. Uh, so people do call in from all over in California as well. So we have some people in Bakersfield. We have some people in um, SoCal, you know, San Diego and stuff who listen. And Anyway, I, I'm sure they'll, people will be showing up. So uh, September 9th and 10th will be uh, in Chino, California, and on the 11th it'll be in Yorba Linda, California. All right, on both of them are at Calvary Chapel, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, yep. Calvary Chapel, Saving Grace. Good, good. And so we got Eddie Delcor on, and also it's going to be Anthony Rogers uh, speaking there, right? Yes, uh, Anthony Rogers, and we also have. Uh, uh, Reverend Samuel Green coming all the way from Australia. We having wow. uh, Hatun, a uh, warrior for Christ. She's from the UK. She's originally Turkish. Uh, the wow. Muslims tried to kill her quite a few times. Even a few months ago, they stabbed her. But the uh, Lord rescued her life from them, and uh, she will be with us. Uh, she's an amazing sister, and uh, 
love to get as many people as possible to come and hear um, uh, her testimony and uh, uh, to also learn about how to answer Muslim objections and how to challenge the Islamic faith as well. Yeah. And also we're going to have Dr. Tony Costa and Dr. Jay Smith. You guys are going to, you're going to have there. It's going to have a full house. Yes. And, um, okay. uh, following the conference, we're having an outreach every single day for a whole week. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. If you are local in California, we would love to partner with you. Uh, but also for those out of California that are not in California and they would like to join us, the whole conference, it, it, it will be live online. Plus, we have two debates during the conference, two debates between Shadid Lewis, which you debated before uh, mm -hmm. uh, Shadid, uh, uh, a few times actually, you debated him in Atlanta, Georgia, and you debated him yes. in Washington uh, State. Mm -hmm. uh, but he will be debating uh, Anthony Rogers, two debates. The first one on, uh, does John chapter 1 talks about Muhammad? And remember that when the Jews ask, asked um, John the Baptist, are you Elijah, are you the Messiah, are you the prophet? Uh, the Jewish, in that text, they're assuming there are three different individuals they're looking for. And they say, okay, he's not the Messiah, he's not, uh, and Jesus is the Messiah, then who's the prophet? It has to be Muhammad. Uh, we're debating that topic, but also we're debating... Um, as uh, Isaiah 53 talks about the suffering Messiah, is Jesus the suffering Messiah, um, or the, serv the suffering servant? Um, it, it will be great debates. Anyone can join us, and we assign the debates at four o'clock on September 10 and 11 um, Pacific time. This way, it's reasonable time, even across the country. It can be six or seven o'clock for you. If you want to show it in your church live, we can we can uh, hook you up and uh, connect you to be able to broadcast it at your church or at your home with a group of people watching together. Uh, just let us know how we can uh, make it available for you. Wow. And let's just go to ministry2muslims.com, right? Ministry2, which is T-O, Muslims, with the S in the end. Dot com ministry to muslims dot com right. and right there you're going to see our strong tower banner you click on that it will take you to the details and uh, and how you can get your ticket but also uh, for those that uh, get their tickets today you can use slick as your promo code and you will be able to get 70% off today uh, if you use promo code uh, slick Okay, S L I C K. Good. Um, wow. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, let's see. The time it's going to be is at nine thirty p.m. and that is Eastern time or what? Um, the, to the, 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 the all the it's the stuff on the flyer I sent you is the Pacific time. All Pacific um, time. Okay. Pacific right. time. Yeah, four p.m. is Pacific time for the debates and. All the details okay. at the at the website, and uh, I really encourage you. It's going to be a really great event, and uh, you will learn how to challenge Muslim the Muslim faith, yeah. and also how to defend the Christian faith, and also we're going to give okay. techniques and how to well, uh, share the gospel with Muslims. Well, let's do that. Let's talk a little bit more about it after the break. And folks, we'll be right back after these messages. Please stay tuned. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. We are on the air here with Eddie Delcor and George Saig. Uh, we're talking about the Strong Tower Conference in Southern California as a, an outreach to Muslims. If you have a question about Islam, uh, Muslim, we have some experts here. I mean, I know stuff, but these guys... They've forgotten more uh, about Islam since lunch today than I've ever learned. They know a lot of stuff. George speaks Arabic. He can tell you all kinds of stuff from the inside. So, uh, gentlemen, welcome back. You guys still there? Yeah, yeah. I'm still here. How are you doing, Mike? Hi, George. <laughs> Hi. 
And so I don't know if Anthony is going to call or not, but uh, yeah, I was looking at the website. There's a lot of good information there, registration, uh, live online. You can uh, watch that, tables uh, for ministries and various things. And then now George is there on the stream as well. Hey, George, I'm waving to you. We're looking at him on uh, StreamYard, too. He's got to stay on the phone, though. you got to stay on the phone, okay? So he'll have to call back in. And it's just technology stuff. So uh, George called back in. I was getting the phone because that's how we do it. And so, uh, Eddie, uh, would you? I'm going to ask if anybody's interested in calling about Islam and questions of Islam because I got questions I got to ask you guys, and we could talk about Islam for a while so that they can see uh, what it is and um, you know and stuff. What are you going to be speaking on, incidentally, uh, at the conference? Um, I'm going to speak on two two particular topics. We're going to do it a little differently. I'm basically going to give a positive affirmation on both the reliability of the New Testament, which is most attacked, because the New Testament is that which affirms Christ and redemption, right. the crucifixion, the only means of salvation, and Jesus as God, man. So I'm going to be presenting a, a positive affirmation on the Trinity. I'm going to put it in, uh, actually I'm going to do it in bullet points. And then we're going to have an objector, either one of the hosts or sound clips, who will be presenting some of the main, and you know, you know, nothing's new under the sun. They're all the same old, tired, boring objections that Muslims, yeah. actually all Unitarians make. And then we will we'll, uh, respond to those, those objections, namely on the deity of Christ and the Trinity. The other topic that I will be addressing is... Um, uh, the Trinity and the New Testament reliability. So on both, that's what we'll do. Uh, present a positive affirmation on both, and we'll have someone present objections on the New Testament reliability and on the doctrine of the nature of God, which is, um, you know, it, it's just really interesting. The You would think they would craft, at least the Unitarians, craft new arguments against the Trinity or even the uh, New Testament reliability, other than the old ones that everyone uses. But they don't, so we'll just hear these recycled arguments again and deal with those two topics. Reliability of the New Testament. And and I'll be speaking on lower criticism or biblical criticism, which really has to do with... Um, it answers the question, do we have in our hands what was written in the first century? That's what lower criticism answers. I won't be dealing much with higher criticism, which gets extremely subjective and deals with mm -hmm. dates, it deals with um, authorship and all these other things, but lower is more objective and will deal with, frankly, do we have a representation of the first century authors in terms of their original composition? Oh, that's going to be interesting. Boy, I wouldn't mind attending that conference. Maybe I'll watch online. So, uh, George... <laughs> Well, hey, you know, you you, you know, I, I've always got stuff to learn. You guys are great. So, George, are you there online, George? Yes. Okay, we hear you. So yes. you're in. Uh, we're watching you on uh, Streamyard, but also, uh, you know, on the radio here. So, um, okay, so we'll talk about the conference again. I'm going to put some information up on on Carm, and you know, we'll send it out in our newsletter, so you guys can can even have a, a, a better, uh, hopefully, uh, turnout. I know that you're going to probably have a really good turnout in SoCal. There, it's a good good place for it. So I, I want to ask you some questions. Is it okay if I ask you guys some Muslim questions? Yeah. The Islam stuff? Sure. sure. All right. Sure. Now, George, I know you speak Arabic, right? And, uh, yeah. So this is a, such a generic, easy question. And I want to play off of what Eddie said here a little bit. But, George, what do they say about Jesus? What do the Muslims actually say about who Jesus is? Uh, what Muslims say who Jesus is, not necessarily what their book says who Jesus is. Uh, Muslims says Jesus is just a prophet. That's what they stuck at, that Jesus, and because the Quran does say that Jesus is not more than a prophet, uh, but even though the Quran says Jesus is not more than a prophet, uh, there's one thing you need to know, the Quran is filled with contradictions. Uh, the Quran also says that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is with God right now, Jesus is sinless, Jesus coming back to judge the world, and like Jesus is the Word of God, 
when you see all the things the Quran says about Jesus, you'll ask yourself, how can he be not more than a prophet? And I don't give the honor to the Quran to prove Jesus' deity, but I put this, all these great things about Jesus side by side with the passage that says that he is not more than a prophet, then showing to the, uh, the contradiction and the problem is that how can this make sense, my Muslim friend? And let's bring them to the Bible to show them why Jesus is the Word of God, why Jesus uh, is without sin, why Jesus coming back to judge the world, because he is more than just a prophet. Right. I don't know if you got any feedback back there. If you can turn anything down in the background, that'd be great, because we're hearing something. But uh, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, is it not true that Muhammad had people killed and took other men's wives and stuff like that, right? Uh, violence is in the Quran, is in the Hadith. Uh, in the Quran, limited to uh, 164 clear verses about violence in Islam, in the Quran. Uh, but Muslims, they don't just believe in the Quran, they believe in the Hadith. The Hadith, the things that Muhammad said. And Muslims take that hadith as very serious. Why? Because the Quran says that Muhammad is an example to all mankind. Therefore, they have to see what Muhammad did, and they want to do the exact things that Muhammad did. Whatever Muhammad did, they have to do. They are required to do. Uh, and when you go to the hadith, over 20,000 times the mention of violence, the cutting of arms and hands and fingers, killing people, raping, and all that stuff is permitted in the hadith very clearly. But that does not mean the Quran doesn't say it. The Quran does say it. Um, over 164 verses, as I said, uh, mentioning of violence in the hadith, in, in the Quran. Right. Uh, Muhammad, definitely a very violent man. Uh, there's all kinds of actions being done by him. So then, uh, the Taliban, they're pretty violent. Would you say they are really uh, following what Muhammad actually taught, or are they extremists, as the news says? No, that's uh, actually uh, the Salafi movement um, is started because they want to bring back Islam to the principle of Islam, to the real Islam, the violent Islam. Um, uh, I, I always say this, praise God, the majority of Muslims are very bad Muslims. <laughs> that's true that's true because we got a break coming up Islam. they don't they don't i'm glad for that that's for sure hey folks we'll be right back after these messages with uh eddie delcor and george saig talking about islam if you have a question about it about islam give us a call 877-207-2276 we'll be right back It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. If you're interested in uh, talking to us, you can maybe call in, and Keith can get your question, and uh, then we can just ask the guys online. We're talking with George Saig and Eddie Delcor. i got a question for Eddie next, and we're talking about the Strong Tower Conference, uh, an apologetics conference in Southern California. And uh, that'll be September 9th to 11th. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. Hey, Eddie, I got a question for you, Eddie. Are you there? Eddie? Eddie, let's see. How can we yes, I'm, yes, I'm here. Okay. okay. You I'm mentioned here. something. You, you said something that really kind of got my interest there. Uh, you kind of said the same old arguments. And, uh, you know, when you said that, I started realizing... It, it is. I've never heard a Muslim come up with anything new. It's always the same old stuff, and they okay. don't seem to study. They don't seem to learn. That, is that what you found? Same thing? Uh, yeah, mo most Unitarians, and I say Unitarians, these are, for our audience's sake, these are groups who uh, believe God exists as one person, whether you're a Jehovah's Witness, a Muslim, a non-believing Jew, a Christadelphian, um, even a you know professing Christian sometimes non converts that are sitting in pews, you know they've never been adequately taught, which of course you know not understanding the Trinity is different than rejecting it you you know I think that's a fair right. thing to say there's many Christians who don't know how to define it, but they don't reject it anyways 
Um, yeah, I found it most rejected <clears throat> on the basis of their lack of understanding. Um, of course, but they're unregenerated, so they're not, they'll, you know, they're not going to accept it unless they were saved. But um, most, what, I don't like to use the word most, but many Muslims and uni- other Unitarians will argue against the Trinity based on their misunderstanding of it, based on their idea that the Trinity means three gods, and it's not, or it's not logical, or something like that only because they haven't actually studied it. And we're talking, look, we're talking basic stuff here. Um, that's why if I, when I do dialogue on this issue of the, of the nature of God, I always ask first, you know, what is, what is your understanding of the Trinity? <laughs> and ha- hands down, you get, you know, the bizarre under- understanding, um, understanding of what the Trinity actually is. So, yeah. I think they're unlearned, unread in Christian doctrine, yet they love to reject it upon a basis of a misunderstanding. Yeah, you're uh, you're, you're dead on. Uh, you know, I just had a debate uh, recently online, and it was a debacle. Uh, the guy couldn't argue his way out of a wet paper bag, and then claimed victory. Um, it's just ridiculous. But I've I. I'm going to put up something on CARM where if they want to debate me, they have to fill it out. It's a form they got to fill it. We'll have it up in a week or so. And they have to, have to define wow. their terms and understand what it is they want to debate. I, I totally agree with you. I've met so many Muslims online. They don't even know what the Trinity is. And, 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 or, and one is Pentecostal, the same thing. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, I met uh, the number one guy, uh, David Bernard, uh, last month and challenged him politely to a debate he's not yet accepted. But uh, that's another thing. So yeah, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm just glad to hear you say that. It's the same old arguments. They don't they don't seem to want to learn. And and uh, you know I'll tell them. I say, why is it you guys don't don't learn what we teach? You know my my file on uh, on Islam on Word is sixty pages, sixty pages of notes. Just I've collected about right. Islam. If, if a Muslim says, hey, Matt, that's not what we teach, I'm going to say, okay, please then tell me what it is and where it's found. I want to represent them accurately. But I don't find that's the case with Muslims, except maybe Shabir Ali. I, I'm going to say that Shabir Ali was pretty nice and respectful and seemed to understand some stuff, except not as well right. as I'd hoped he would have. You know? I, I, I think you do find some that will have at least a basic, coherent understanding of, of the Trinity. They still don't accept it. And, uh, and of course, another um, another common objection is that no one in the early church held to the doctrine of the Trinity. Um, now, as we agree, uh, patristics are not a valid hermeneutic to interpret the Bible, but you look at early fathers talking about God the Son, God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is to be meant by, by Clement of Alexandria, as Alexandria writing about, um, gosh, 190, he used those terms. Um, but you do find pre-Nicene fathers um, speaking of the concept of the Trinity. No, they didn't use 21st century language, but they spoke of the concept. Um, I'll make one more point. Ignatius, which is one of the earliest church fathers, <coughs> uh, in his writings, he may have been a, a, a disciple of the Apostle John, several times in his genuine letters, the genuine letters, he mentions this phrase, he refers to Jesus with, with this phrase, Hasaos, the God, our God, Jesus Christ, several times, but he does it in light of a distinction from God the Father. And there's nowhere in the Greek, nowhere in the Greek of his genuine letters, where he teaches that Jesus as God is the Father. Nowhere does he have any kind of construction in the Greek text of that. So that's another argument you hear, that the, you don't find it in early church history. Right. I find one of the things that they fail miserably on is understanding the doctrine of the hypostatic union and along with the communication of the properties of the communicatio idiomatum, two critical doctrines to understand the work of Christ and who he is, and uh, they just repeatedly just fail to, to study it. If I bring a debate a Muslim, I'm going to study their topic. I'm going to study what they see. I'm going to research what they teach. Yeah. But uh, I don't find the same yeah. thing to, in reverse, generally speaking. You know, I just it, don't. It, 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 it's interesting because, unfortunately, Christians don't either. Um, many times, but well, of course not. Um, Muslims Muslims also confuse the humanity and, and the deity, just as as you said. And Christians understand too. The flesh of Jesus Christ is not a part; it's 
not an involvement. It's not an additional person to the Trinity. The Trinity teaches three divine persons, not three persons with an added uh, creaturely attribute, flesh. So his flesh is not included um, in that sense right. in the doctrine of the Trinity. And what Muslims do, they will argue, you know, he died, he can't be God, or he doesn't know when he's coming back, right. he can't be God. You know, all these humanity passages. Right. Because they don't know the hypothetic union nor the Trinity. No, they don't. Yeah, I've had to teach many Muslims. This is what we actually believe, and uh, you know. But it's what it is. It's what it is. So uh, I get a question, or someone has a question. Someone called in and had a question. Uh, maybe we can do this with George because you know, he knows. I know you do too. But how can Adam be considered a prophet in Islam? That's what the question is from Rudolph. George, what would you say? Uh, how do you consider him a prophet? Uh a prophet, I guess, to his family. Uh, but uh, according to Islam, there are around 125,000 prophets. And they don't even have the names for all those prophets. They have a list of 25 biblical prophets. But also they believe uh, the Alexander the Great is a prophet. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's very crazy when it comes to prophethood. Uh, they... They don't even know who all the prophets are. <laughs> right, they don't. Hey, George, could you, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of noise in your background there, but uh, during the meantime, could you I, introduce... I don't have any background. No? Uh, I, I don't know what's... Uh, yeah, I have no idea where this background is coming from. Wow, he just quit. Maybe Laura did something. Did you do something, Laura? No, she doesn't do anything. That's just okay. I don't get it, but hey, that's okay. All right, we got a co- you've got a conference coming up. Could you... Tell us more about yes. this conference again for, for the new listeners. Uh, our Strong Power Conference is the 21st annual conference that we have for ministry to Muslims. And our desire is to, re- to reach out to the church, to equip the church, to get them ready to reach out to the Muslims wherever they are. And there, there are Muslims all across this country. And, for example, just last week I was in a mosque, in Southern Mosque. Uh, and I took a few pastors with me. And guess what the name of the imam? The imam, mm. his name is Imam John. He's an American converted to Islam. We asked him, uh, what, what kind of Christian were you? He said, I was Catholic. Then I have a safe born-again experience. I get saved in the Baptist church. Then he had a hard time understanding the Trinity. He decided to convert to Islam. There are many young people in our churches today, they have a hard time understanding the Trinity. There are many Christians today, they don't know really how to, why they believe what they believe. And our desire is to equip the saints to be ready to reach out to the Muslims and also to know their faith, to know what they believe and how we can defend what we believe. Uh, And that's why we work with people like you, uh, Matt, and others like David Wood and and, uh, Anthony and Eddie and... uh, uh, Samuel Green from Australia. Uh, many people are going to be part of this, uh, Dr. Tony Costa. Uh, we would love to be there with you, to to equip you, to have you, to get you ready, but also we would love to partner with you to provide gospel material wherever we, you are. We ship it to you to reach out to the Muslims in your neighborhood. And uh, we, we also have an opportunity after the conference. We have seven days of outreaches every single day. If you are local in Southern California, if you are not, uh, there are many people are flying to come to this conference from other states, even from Canada. And uh, we would love to have you, and uh, uh, okay. please just get in touch. <laughs> well, i got a question for you for after the break, because people are going to sure. want to know this. Is witnessing to Muslims dangerous? So let's get back to that after the break. Hey, folks, we'll be right back after these messages with uh, George and Eddie. Please stay tuned. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. This is Matt Slick. Listen to Matt Slick Live. We have uh, George Saig and Eddie Dalcor on the line with us. You guys still there? Yes. All right, good. Yes, I'm still here. Good. I'm going to ask a question of Eddie here about the Trinity a little bit, but George, uh, uh, you know, if you would... 
Could you tell us about, uh, is witnessing to Muslims really that dangerous, going out to in Southern California and other places here in America? Is it okay to do that? Um, we do have the legal rights uh, in this country. We have the freedom to do so, at, at least for now. But, um, yes, it, it is dangerous, but um, Jesus did not call us for safety. <laughs> he told us to carry the cross and follow him. And he told us in the world we're going to have persecution, but we have to trust that he overcome the world. Uh, but praise God. Um, I've been working with Muslims in Sudan before I came to America and uh, for the last 25 years in this country. I'm, I'm being attacked only a couple times, two times, uh, in 2004, a long time ago. Um, uh, majority of Muslims are very loving and kind people. And as I said earlier, praise God, the majority of Muslims are bad Muslims. They don't follow their books. If they follow the Quran, they are not supposed even to take us as friends. But praise God, I have a lot of Muslim friends. I was born among them. I lived among them. And I really know that the majority of them are very kind and loving people. Mm-hmm. Our problem is not with the people. Our problem is the teaching of Islam. Right. Yeah, I've found most, uh, most Muslims to be polite, uh, good people, you know, on the human level. That's what I've found, except when you come into contact with the ones who want to debate, then they don't know what they're talking about, generally speaking. Could you plug your conference Matt, again? Go ahead. Yes. Matt, I want to tell you, um, the very genuine Muslims, even, let's say, Osama bin Laden, he is really sincere to do what his book tells him to do, what he, he think the Quran claimed to be revealed by the same God of the Bible. As a result, these fanatic Muslims, they are really willing to die because they really think God, the creator of the universe, asked them to do so. I want to tell you, Muslims, fanatic Muslims, are very genuine Muslims. They really wanted to do the right thing. We need to overcome fear because... The more the good Muslims, the, the more closer to the Quran, the closer to Islam, the ones genuinely really think that they are following the true way. And if they found the true way, if they recognize who Christ is and what he's done for them, they make the best Christians ever. Our God is the same God yesterday and today and forever. He is the same one that he encountered Paul and changed him. And he is able to change even the fanatic Muslims today. Amen? Amen. Amen. And isn't uh, it true? Isn't it true, yeah. though, that a lot of Muslims are having visions and dreams of Jesus in the Middle East? Oh, over 70% of Muslims coming to Christ through dreams and visions. Jesus mm-hmm. doesn't need us at all. He can do it all. But what an honor he's willing to use us to reach yeah. out to these people. What an honor. Let's reach out to them as God brought them from all across the world to us here. Hundreds of thousands of Muslims, students, universities and colleges is packed with Muslim students from Saudi Arabia, a place where there's no Christian can go. And even if you succeeded to go, you have to sign a paper. You cannot bring your own Bible to that country. But we have hundreds of thousands of Saudi Arabian students in our campuses. What an opportunity. A city in uh, North Carolina, uh, 8,000 Sudanese Muslims in that city. I I go and visit that city every while, and I I go to this area just next to Starbucks, and I find hundreds of Sudanese Muslims. So we spend hours talking. They love to talk about God. They love, I tell them straight, I am a Christian, I would like to talk about God. Would you like to talk about God? And they just sit down, they bring you food, and they just want to talk to you. I I love, that's what, one of the things I love about Muslims, they love to talk about God. Yeah. And, and sadly, they always tell me, why you Christians are not willing to stand for what you believe? We tell Muslim Christians objections, they tell us, oh, Jesus loves you, and they walk away. We, the Bible is clear that we are to give an answer about the hope we have. I think that's the biggest fear that the Church has, not the fear of violence, but mostly the fear of not knowing how to respond to Muslim arguments. And that's why we're having this conference, Our Strong Tower, the 21st 
uh, annual event for uh, our ministry to Muslims. And it's going to be in Southern California in two different locations. All the details at the website, ministry2, which is T-O, muslims.com, ministry to muslimscom And if you get your tickets today, please use Slick for a promo code, and you will get 70% off immediately. Would love to have you guys. It's going to be a really awesome event, and you're going to get a chance to speak to Dr. Eddie Dalcor, Reverend Anthony Rogers. You're going to get a chance to watch two debates live right there uh, between uh, Anthony Rogers and uh, and uh, Shadid Lewis, is a convert to Islam, I think, over 20 years ago when he converted. Uh, Shadid, he debated Matt before at least three debates. Uh, it will be a really great opportunity to see it, this debate. You can also join us live if you want to show it in your church, wherever you are. We can uh, provide you the, the signal to be able to have it live in your church as well. Uh, also, Dr. Uh, Tony Costa, Dr. Jay Smith. He, Dr. Jay Smith is going to be in Brazil, but he's going to join us live. Uh, but Samuel Green, flying all the way from Australia, he's one of the top people when it comes to the Quran and the readings of the Quran. He's the first uh, to speak about the variance uh, between the different Arabic Qurans, and he will be with us uh, for wow. 10 days, three days for the conference, but he also going to participate in outreaches uh, at, at different places uh, that we're going to, including San Diego. We're going to be reaching to 200 refugees, going to come and meet us from Afghanistan, uh, we can have amazing opportunities, and you're going to be able to put your what you learn in practice uh, immediately. Um, uh, you, it's awesome. I love the fact that you are watching Matt and you're learning so many things. But let's put it in action. Let's reach out to the Muslims <laughs> that God bring your way. Amen. Amen. A lot of people, a lot of Christians just don't realize that when you trust God and you go out there witness, even if you've just learned a few things, you'd be surprised what God will do with you. He fills your heart and your, your, mind, your mind and your mouth with words, and you come back and you go, I didn't even know I knew that. It happens. It does. But you've got to get out there and give it a try. So it's a strong tower conference. You can go to ministry to Muslims. That's T-O, ministry to Muslims dot com. And all the information is right there. I've been looking at the site, and well done, and uh, a lot of good speakers there. It's going to be great. It really is. So good for you. All right. Now, I want to ask Eddie a question here. We've only got about five minutes left on the show, and, uh, you know, George said something, and then you said something, about the, uh, we talked about the Trinity. I've been teaching on the Trinity now extensively. I have a 500-word paragraph just on the Trinity that I've been teaching on. And uh, huh. so how frequently, Eddie, how frequently does the Trinity come up and that's a, it, part A and part B. Are Christians really that ignorant of uh, that doctrine and other doctrines? Go ahead. I know we're, we'll be dealing with this on our, on our I think, the show that we're doing the 7th. I forgot if we ever solidified a, a, a date for our um, Apologetics in the Church show. Yes. But um, that's an excellent question. And I, look, when I speak on the Trinity or on the deity of Christ or even on justification through faith alone, I seriously ask the audience, in the last 10 years, who here has ever heard a message on the Trinity at any church? I promise, I'm not, this is not exaggeration, I don't get any hands. You know, I can ask the same question about the deity of Christ, the true deity of Christ. I can ask the same question about justification through faith alone. But if I ask about end times or prophetic speculations or something else, I'll get a zillion hands. What is wrong with that picture? Yeah. I blame directly. I blame pastors for not being teacher, teaching pastors. They're more consumer friendly. Not all of them. We have a lot of great pastors out there, but too many of them are, are not. I think because they themselves do not do much study on the doctrine of Trinity, so they're re, you know they're kind of resistant. They relegate the Trinity. This is the worst thing. They relegate the Trinity either to an egg or to a mystery. Both are horrible. An egg, don't use analogies. I always make, you know, rule number one, don't use analogies, because they all, they're either oneness or they're either Mormon. Don't use analogies. And, and, <laughs> and number two, <laughs> you know, number two, pastors have an obligation to learn. The, the, the very marrow, right, of redemption is that God the Father sent God the Son to become, to add a new nature for us, for redemption, and God the Spirit is sent 
by the Father and Son to regenerate. You don't have redemption without the doctrine of Trinity, but yet it's the, it's the most important doctrine, but yet it's the most neglected doctrine. When we talk about the Gospel, how is it that Jesus did his cross work without God the Father sending him, without God the Father adopting us, without God the Father justifying us? The Father is the one that justifies. The Father is the one that elects. The Father is the one that adopts. And the, the Son, God the Son, is the one who dies on the cross, who lives the perfect life. You don't have any of that without the doctrine of Trinity. If you say Jesus is God, what do you mean by that? Is he one God of many? Is he himself the Father? How do you explain he's God? Because look, Jesus said in John 8, 24, unless you believe that I'm eternal God, you'll die in your sins. So it's a requirement for, for Christians. And unfortunately, Matt, too many Christians, just like justification through faith alone, have not been adequately exposed to the doctrine of the Trinity, the deity of Christ, nor justification by faith alone. And here's the result. When they try to explain the Trinity, because the the cults and the atheistic religions, like Islam, they know how to how to refute it. They know how to, you know, come against it. But Christians are just standing there, you know, walking in a dense fog because they haven't been taught. And they def- I've seen this. George, I saw this in San Diego. They define the Trinity in oneness terms, as a <laughs> functionally oneness. They define justification functionally as a Roman Catholic. That's a problem. And first and foremost, I blame the pastors for not being adequately equipped to teach these fundamental doctrines of the essential truth. That's what I think. Man, man, oh man, if I was there, man, high five to you. I say the same stuff. I say the yeah. <laughs> same stuff. I do. I lay Nobody it. cares. Nobody cares. Nobody. we got to know the Trinity. Nobody we got to know who Jesus is, justification, imputation. Oh, man. Man, I'm just nodding and smiling while you're going. I would have just kept quiet the whole time. Good for you, brother. And, well, we do do, you know, if I when can, we do... If I, if I can, if I can we only have like point. 30 seconds. And, and, okay. 30 se- and, and just because you believe in the Trinity does not mean true salvation, because you can believe in the Trinity like a Roman Catholic and deny justification through faith alone. Yes, you can. That's not the Christ of Scripture. That's not That's the God right. of Scripture. Oh, brother. Well, we're going to have talk, good time talking on our conference that we're going to be doing. Sorry, we, I've had internet problems. It looks like they're finally solved, so it's taken a while. Oh, cool. Okay, so, uh, George, look, we only have probably 30 seconds. Oh, no, we got 10 seconds. I'm going to just say this really fast. We've got 10 seconds left in the show. Everybody, George Sig, Eddie Delcor, just had him on. I want you to check out ministrytomuslims.com. I'll be mentioning it for the next few days anyway. And, uh, George, thank you, buddy, for coming on. And, uh, Eddie, thanks for coming on. Okay, well, God bless. Hey, we're just out of time. we got to go. So, hey, God bless, brothers. We'll see you. All right, everybody. By God's grace, we'll be back on there tomorrow. We'll talk to you then. Another program powered by the Truth Network.